Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, anybody taking notice of the Western media will have noticed that so many laughable stories in the media about Russia stealing Ukrainian washing machine chips to take their chips from them to produce their missiles. It's just yet another ridiculous story that, like most stories about Russia in the Western media, has no basis in fact. I mean, the truth is, there's no shortage of microchips in Russia, and now even American media outlets are issuing warnings about the situation. I mean, despite the sanctions in place, Russia's been able to procure microchips designed by US companies. As analysts have observed, the use of imported chips is a standard international practice that's very difficult to halt. I mean, what factors contributed to the failure of Washington's technical blockade of Russia? Well, the New York Times reports that since the escalation of the situation in Ukraine in 2022, Moscow has received American-designed chips for combat electronics worth $4 billion. Now, according to industry sources, a significant portion of Russian missiles are equipped with the FPGA gate array produced by Advanced Micro Devices and Intel. It's worth noting that a considerable number of these chips were purchased through a network of shell companies based in places like Hong Kong, United Arab Emirates, etc. Now, the New York Times has cited customs data that indicates that Russia imported goods worth more than $400 million, uh, and that's just part of its wider effort to circumvent the sanctions. Now, the authors of their article in the New York Times state that Russia promptly reoriented its supply chains, initially seeking out friendly countries and ports willing to service its ships. Well, that was pretty logical, particularly when you've got friends in the Shanghai Cooperation Organization and the BRICS. Now, this enabled Moscow to source chips through Turkey, the UEA, Morocco, and China's also emerged as a major supplier. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, SEO Bricks Insight, and that will help me further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me directly. Now, the United States have been seeking to restrict the availability of American-designed electronic products to Russia for some time. Also, the United States is targeting individual citizens it believes are assisting Russia. In November last year, four individuals were arrested in the United States on charges of illegally shipping over $7 million worth of semiconductors, integrated circuits and other electronic components to Russia. Also, the Federal Court of the Southern District of New York, yeah, that one, the same place that handed down a major sentence to Donald Trump, uh, handed down a three-year prison sentence of 36 months um, of supervised release to a Russian national, Maxim Marchenko, for purchasing American dual-use microelectronics and sending them to Russia. Now, it's worth noting that in April, Bloomberg reported that American officials were actively searching for companies that were violating their current restrictions. Plus, the Times highlights the... Uh, significant challenges that are associated with trying to keep the compliance with the restrictions. Now, the expert community is convinced that the use of imported microelectronics is a, just a common international practice and it's impossible for the United States to limit the supplies to Russia by limiting supplies to anybody else. I mean, the modern electronic world is a comprise of a vast array of different types of chips and with hundreds and even thousands of products utilising them. These can be universal or have a very narrow specialisation. I mean, no country in the world is able to produce the entire range of microelectronic components within its own borders, explained Alexei Anpilogov, who's president of the Foundation for the Support of Scientific Research, uh, Osvani. I mean, Despite Russia's domestic production capabilities, a considerable volume of electronics are actually imported and utilised within the country. Now, this has always been a matter of public record. I mean, even after the Ukraine Armed Forces uh, and the NATO handlers 
got fragments of Russian missiles, they conducted the reverse engineering and determined that the circuitry is of Russian origin. However, some of the components are of Western origin. I mean, Russia's primary reliance is on integrated circuits, including memories, chips, processors, and a range of controllers. It's important to recognize that there's a potential vulnerability in this situation if the Western countries were able to implement a complete ban on the export of this type of equipment, it would actually have a significant impact on the military-industrial complex in Russia. But it's pretty unlikely. I mean, the United States is unable to restrict such supplies, no matter how hard it tries. I mean, the majority of the chips in question are dual-use items, and to illustrate, the primary aiming unit in a Lancet missile is comparable to that of a game console. I mean, the similarity of functions is the key factor. In both cases, a large volume of graphics data needs to be processed as an polygraph. And it's just not feasible to restrict the distribution of consoles, particularly given the considerable sales volumes that they have worldwide. Also, even if it were to be implemented, it would just simply lead to the new similar entity opening up the next door uh, next day and continue to serve customers. So once you shut one down, just a new one opens and that customers are still going to be the Russian military industrial complex. Plus, another challenge for the US is its relatively low volume of the number of chips required by Russia. Russia's requirements are not actually in the millions. It's, it's really in a few thousands and it's pretty impossible to track several thousand units. Plus, Countries such as China, Iran and numerous other states which have been uh, designated by the West as part of the new axis of evil operate along a similar model. They are able to get the chips and they work with allied nations in the global south to meet their own requirements. And that's all Russia's done. He also highlighted that the sanctions imposed by the US are also having a positive impact. These are prompting countries to focus more on developing their own technology such as Russia is doing. It's also worth noting that rockets do not actually require the most advanced electronics. I mean, yes, yeah, a complex process that requires precise calibration and significant energy consumption. That's a crucial aspect. But the military does tend to favour the use of the older generation chips. That's given their reliability and resilience to various impacts. I mean, rockets... Uh, has historically faced a shortage of military electronics, according to Ilya uh, Kramik, who's a research fellow at the Centre for the Study of Strategic Planning at uh, MIMO. I mean, this has resulted in a significant portion of um, semiconductor devices being uh, imported. Well, he wasn't surprised to learn that Moscow continues this practice, though. I mean, yeah, it's not without its challenges, obviously. Uh, I mean, the United States has previously uh, attempted to restrict the supply of uh, electronics to Russia. I mean, they started that back in the Cold War, I mean, under the Soviet Union, and that policy still continues. I mean, the sanctions imposed by Washington and arresting people accused of uh, exporting equipment in the factory uh, just complicates the situation slightly, but, you know... All it does is it costs slightly higher prices. It doesn't stop the things happening. You know, there's always somebody else that's prepared to take the chance and, you know, the likelihood of getting caught is, is minimum. I mean, so the United States is unable to supply as to sever all the supply lines, no matter how much influence it thinks it has with corporations and manufacturers in the various countries, because money talks and political considerations don't. Politicians come and go, but business is business. I mean, he agreed with uh, Anne Pigloff that modern missile requirements require reliable electronics rather than advanced technology. I mean, one of the key requirements for military is the stability and the uh, uh, ability to operate in reliable uh, in challenging conditions, including vibration, overload and strong interference. So all their chips, in turn, and their technical capabilities represent a highly sophisticated technological product in terms of military performance. Therefore, they don't need the same level of power for drones as they do for modern graphics stations or personal computers. Often, the only question is exactly how to assemble the parts. I mean, we have our own designs of radio electronics, which simply use components of foreign origin. 
And they've reproduced some of the things themselves and some they have not, you know. So the ones they can't, they don't. But they're still working to overcome the uh, the lag and investing significant funds and resources in this work. And it's already underway as part of the import substitution. So Russia isn't doing quite well and it's just yet another failure of the sanctions emerges. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, you can help me fund the channel and the um, website seobrexinsight.com by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.